Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 5.5, Solving Rational Inequalities. So you might remember from 5.4 that we had two methods to solve. The first method was to use cross-multiplying, and we cannot do that here. Um, that's because if I multiply by t plus 1 and t plus 8, sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative, and if it's negative, we have to change the sign, because we don't know whether or not it is positive or not. We cannot change the sign, so we can't cross-multiply. Um, so we're going to have to move everything over. That's method number two. So let's get started. Um, zero is greater than 240 over t plus 8 minus 20t over t plus 1. And we'll write our restrictions in right here right now. t not equal to negative 1 or negative 8. And we can just continue on. You're going to multiply by the LCD. So t plus 1 goes into here and t plus 8 goes into here. So I'll write it in. It's kind of like cross multiplying if you think about it. And again, if you're not good with fractions, this is something that you should really just review and go over because it really helps when you're trying to solve these things. Okay, so now I have something in the top and then I can leave the bottom alone. You actually want to be in factored form, so we're just going to leave it as it is and expand this out. Don't forget to use that negative as you distribute the 20t to the two terms distributive property, and you have to always include the t plus 8 and the t plus 1. I know it's a little bit tedious, but that's okay. You just got to do it. So we'll collect like terms and put it in order. So we get um, plus 80t plus 240 over t plus 8 times t plus 1. And like I said, we do want to factor this. So we're going to common factor first, t squared minus um, 4t minus 12 over t plus 8t plus 1. So one more step here, we've got to common, or sorry, we're going to factor the top here. Just got distracted, sorry. <laughs> and I'm now in fully factored form. So now that I'm in factored form, I want to know when this is a negative, and how are we going to do that? Well, if you remember trying to solve if something is negative, we did use a chart in the last unit, so I'm going to use exactly the same chart. I'm going to take the zeros from the top and from the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to just get going with that. So we have a negative 8, we have a negative 2, and we're just doing them in order negative 1 and a 6. So I got the negative 8 from here, the negative 2 from here, the negative 1 from here, and the 6 from here. And we're going to write every single thing, every single factor into our chart. So negative 20, t minus 6, t plus 2, t plus 8, and t plus 1. And we just use the chart as we did before. So remember, this negative 20 is really important because it changes the sign for everything, and it's going to be it's going to end up changing our answer, so you do have to make sure you do it. You just look for when this turns to 0, t plus 2, that's the zeros at negative 2, so that's when it changes to pluses. And if you have everything with t's, then just regular positive t, then it's really pretty straightforward. And there you go. So we'll multiply all these together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 5 negatives, so it becomes negative. 4 negatives and a plus, so that's plus, negative, plus, and negative. And we want to know when it is negative, so that's here, here, and here. So we'll write our solution out. It goes from negative infinity to negative 8, union, negative 2 to negative 1, union, 6 to infinity. And that is our solution. So this one's a little bit simpler. And you can pause the video and try it on your own. You can also check the answers from the notes if you don't want to watch the rest of the video. That's up to you. I'm going to solve the next two examples in exactly the same way. So again, I'm just going to move everything over, and it's up to you which side you want to do. And at the same time, I'm going to also multiply this by x. So I'm going to get x times x minus 2 minus 8 o over x is less than or equal to 0. And I'll get x squared minus 2x minus 8 over x is less than or equal to 0, and then you can factor that over x is less than or equal to 0. And then we're going to take this and put it into the chart, and we get negative 2 here, 
the 0 comes from the x, and 4. Okay, so the, you can put this in order if you like, so that, you know, you can just use the pattern to fill in the chart. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. You just do it the way that you like to do it. And also, I noticed that x cannot be equal to 0, so I'm actually going to put a restriction on that, so that I remember when I write my answer, I'm going to make sure that I have included the negative 2 and 4, because I want it less than equal to 0, and not the 0, okay? So it's just a little visual reminder to help me out. So you just fill in the chart nice and easy, just like before. And we multiply them together to find our answer. And we know we want it to be negative again. So this area and this area. So our answer is going to be negative infinity to negative 2, inclusive, because this is when it is equal to 0, right? And union non-inclusive 0, because that's an asymptote in the bottom, to for inclusive, because again, that's a 0 in the top. Okay, so that's how you do it. Last question. So you can see that in our denominators we have x minus 1, x plus 1, and x plus 2, and then our last denominator we've actually got all three of those, because as we know, x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1, and then it's multiplied by x plus 2. And this is actually the LCD because it's all the components from the other ones. Um, so just make sure that you don't multiply everything by everything because then you'll end up with this huge quintic. And that's a lot more work than I would like to do. So try to minimize your work by finding the actual LCD. And then we'll multiply. So x minus 1, we're missing um, the x plus 1 and the x plus 2. So we'll multiply the top by that. So we get 4 times x plus 1 times x plus 2. And then for this one, we have the plus 1, so we're missing the minus 1 and the plus 2. So we'll just multiply it by x minus 1 times x plus 2. And put it all over the LCD. x plus 1, x plus 2. And you can see I'm just trying to keep my um, inequalities lined up. It just keeps the work a little bit neater. Uh, if you need more space, just I don't know, move everything over at once if you like. So I'm just going to multiply this by x plus 1, x minus 1, and then of course the 24 has everything in it, so we'll leave that one alone. So we get x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 2 in the bottom. And then we're going to move everything over, and while I move it over, I'm actually going to do a little bit of simplifying at the same time. So 2 times x squared minus 1 plus 24 minus... 4 times x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus, uh, sorry, minus x, change that sign, x squared plus x minus 2, all over our LCD. Don't get lazy, you do have to write it every single time. I know you don't want to, but you do have to. And then we'll just simplify. So if you're good at this kind of thing, it's a little bit tedious, um, but, you know, it's at least it's not too hard to do. You can just, you know, go along with it. It's, it's pretty straightforward uh, once you get the hang of it. So x minus x cubed minus x squared plus 2x. Just make sure that you do transfer all those negatives in uh, using the distributive property and that you write this LCD in the bottom. So now I can collect like terms. I'll get 0 is greater than or equal to negative x cubed, and then I'm going to get 2x squared minus 4x squared minus x squared is minus 3x squared. Um, I look for my x's, which are gives me negative 10x, and my constants, which gives me plus 14. Don't forget to write your LCD at the bottom, of course. So now that I have that, um, some people like to get rid of this negative, and if you want to, you can multiply everything by negative 1 here. But if you do that, you have to multiply the other side by negative 1, and you have to change the sign. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but you don't have to do that. This is a totally optional step. Personally, for me, I like to solve polynomials where the leading coefficient is positive. So, you know, it's up to you how you like to do that. 
Um, so just make sure you do change it if you change everything. And I'm also going to let that equal f of x, because guess what? I have to factor it. So f of x, for f of x, the PRR are plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 7, and plus minus 14. And if you plug in f of 1, you actually get 0, so that's nice. And so we'll just do our synthetic, but you can use long division if you want. Um, so we're using all of those skills from chapter 3 to, um, to solve these questions. So hopefully you don't forget how to do that stuff because it's really important. So 0 is less than or equal to x minus 1 times x squared plus 4x plus 14. And if we look at the discriminant of x squared plus 4x plus 14, you can see that it is negative, which means that you cannot have any zeros. So we can see actually that it is above the axis because it's opening upwards. It has a positive leading coefficient and has a y-intercept at 14, so it's opening up and never touches the axis. So now that I'm in fully factored form, you might notice that I have a hole here, and you can write it without the hole, but I actually like to leave the hole in since I'm not graphing. I'm just going to use the chart with it, so I want to keep it in so that I remember um, what's going on with, with the hole. So you're just going to write all of these in here, x squared plus 4x plus 14, x plus 1, but when you write x minus 1, you have to write it twice, so make sure you write it every single time that it appears. x plus 2, like that. And then we'll write our zeros in order. We have negative 2, negative 1, and 1. And all of these are in the denominator, so they are restrictions. Um, x squared plus 4, x plus 14, again, has no zeros. So x minus 1, we'll just fill in the chart for it. x squared plus 4x plus 14, as I said, is always positive. It's always above the x-axis. x plus 1, x minus 1 again, so just copy the same thing, and then x plus 2. Multiply them together using those same skills from before, and you can see that I want it to be positive. So my solution is going to be here, here, and here. And you can see that's why I left my hole in, because then it reminds me of this restriction. I'm just going to write my answer in. It's negative infinity to negative 2 with an open bracket, because it says not equals union negative 1 to 1, union 1 to infinity. And there you go. So if you have a hole, make sure that you just leave it in um, to remind yourself, or at least remember to put that restriction in there for yourself in the solution. Um, basically, all we did was move everything over, factor, and then use the chart. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in class. Bring me any questions. See you soon.